Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video which is my December TBR. My December TBR. It boggles the mind <laughs> that we are here again. I feel like my brain is still stuck in 2019 and the last two years have gone by like at a snail's pace and then at the speed of light at the same time. I don't know how that's humanly possible, but it feels like yesterday that I put together my December 2020 TBR, and it also feels like it was lifetimes ago from when I put up that video. But here we are, it is December, or at least it will be momentarily when this video is uploaded, and I love this season. I love the holidays. I love Christmas. I love the decorations and the baking and the gift giving and the carols and the Christmas tree and it's it's a vibe. Not that you would be able to tell any of that from the books that I've selected to read in December. Like, I feel like some of them are probably mildly depressing, but... <laughs> all in good fun. So we're gonna start talking about the books, but for December I decided to participate in the Reindeer Games Readathon, which is a team-based readathon. I am on Team Candy Cane, and our fearless leader is Amanda. I'll put her information and all of the other hosts' information in the description box for you, but essentially it is a very seasonal readathon where each of the prompts is named after one of Santa's reindeers. So I'm gonna go through that, the prompts, the books I've selected, the, all that jazz. You know how it works. Um, but what I have tried to do, hopefully with some effectiveness, is basically use books for this readathon that are books that I really, 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 really want to get to before the year ends. So why don't we dive right in. Alrighty, so the first of the prompts is Dasher and that is to read a short story or collection or a novella. So what I ended up choosing for that one is Sometimes the Soul by Gia Tempanelli, which is actually a duology. So there are two novellas in here. They're described as novella length fables which is really interesting. I know that one of them is like a recasting of Beauty and the Beast. The other seems like it might have some magical realism vibes with it because I think the main character locks herself away in a tower and her like alone time is interrupted by a parrot or something of the sort. Um, I really don't know a ton about this. I actually picked this up during that um, Catskills getaway reading vlog of mine, which I'll put in the cards for you if you're interested. That also feels like it was a million years ago, but was a very much needed retreat into a cabin in the woods for like a long reading weekend. So this is what I'll read for this. I think I will attempt to read both of them. They're two novellas, so it's under 200 pages. I feel like as long as the stories are interesting, it shouldn't be a huge ask to read them both. Moving to Dancer. So a book by one of your favorite authors, and the book that I chose for that is The Women of Troy by Pat Barker. This is a book that is very much an anticipated release of 2021 for me, but I also have not stopped talking about The Silence of the Girls, which I read last year. It shook me to my core, so I have been very excited about this. They don't describe it as a sequel to The Silence of the Girls, but Bersaiz is in this book again, so it kind of gives me sequel vibes, but so is Hecuba, King Priam's widow, I think? Is he alive? He's, I think he's dead. I'm pretty sure he's dead. But this is another, like, Greek retelling um, with, like, feminist vibes galore. It's really from, from the perspective of the women during the Trojan War and what becomes of them. 
and like I said, it wrecked me. I am expecting very much the same result here. So I am very, very excited about this one. And I just haven't gotten around to it. So I would really like to do that in December. Then we move on to Prancer, which is to read a book with a travel element in it, vacation, a quest, etc. So I do have two possibilities for this prompt. One is written in My Own Heart's Blood by Diana Gabaldon, which is book eight in the Outlander series. And the other would be book nine in the series, Go Tell the Bees That I'm Gone, that came out in November. So the reason it's kind of in one or the other situation is because depending on when I finish book seven, which I'm currently reading, I might just start this in November, in which case it wouldn't count towards the readathon. But if not, then this will count. Um, regardless, Go Tell the Bees That I'm Gone is also a book that I want to read this month. So one way or another, I am reading both of them. Um, but in true Outlander fashion, they're usually some sort of journey or travel going on in some way. Like they've been on like transatlantic flight, transatlantic flights, transatlantic like ship rides, transatlantic voyages is what I'm trying to get at. They've been on transatlantic voyages. They've traveled on horseback from like the Carolinas up into like the northeast. They, they're they usually traveling somewhere. So one way or another, I think these books will work for it. But as I said, if I start this in November, I won't use it for the prompt. I can't use it for the prompt. Um, so either way, I'll get to one of these. And also, oh, another thing, this will count, either one will count for the Christmas star bonus which is to read a tome, so a book that's over 500 pages long, and this is a thousand pages, roughly, and I'm sure Go Tell the Bees and I'm Gone is going to be up there as well, so they'll work for that too. Onward to Vixen, a book that has recently caught your eye, and the book that I've selected for that one is the King of Infinite Space by Lindsay Fay, which I'm also reading for Noelle at Noelle Seven Pages Hot Girl Book Club. This is the December pick and I'm so excited to be reading it with her and there's supposed to be like a live show, I believe, at some point. So I definitely wanted to put this on the TBR since I do need to read it. This is a book that I probably would never have even thought to pick up. It was not on my radar until Noelle started talking about it for the Hot Girl Book Club. And it it's interesting. So it is a magical queer feminist retelling of Hamlet. I don't really know much more than that, but it it had a lot of buzzwords for me <laughs> in marketing speak. I love Shakespeare. I took no fewer than four classes on Shakespeare when I was in college and one of them was actually on like retellings and adaptations of one of his plays. So this is really really up my alley. Hamlet is probably one of my favorite Shakespearean plays, although Macbeth kind of takes the top honor for me. So I am very very intrigued by this. It's a modern setting. I really don't know much more than that. It'll be interesting to see how I get along with this book though. I'm gonna give it a go. The Hamlet thing definitely sold me on this one. Moving right along to Comet, which is to read a five-star prediction. So I picked a book from my five-star prediction video from way at the beginning of the year that I haven't gotten to yet. There is absolutely no chance that I will get to all the books that are still left, but I did want to get to this one because it has appeared on many a TBR at this point and time has not been on my side at all. <laughs> like not even a little bit. So many books, so little time is the key here. But the book that I want to read for this one is Catherine by Anya Seton, 
which is a historical fiction set in the 14th century and it's about this love affair between Catherine Swinford, I believe, and John of Gaunt and they are two historical figures that I know next to nothing about but the 14th century setting sounded really interesting and also I have heard so many good things about this book now that I've spoken about it on my channel. Several people who have read it have spoken really highly of it. I know that Anya Seton is kind of a name to know in historical fiction even though she was writing decades ago now but a lot of like historical fiction writers refer back to her for doing these like biographical novels I think is how Anya Seton described the books themselves. So I am very very interested in reading this one and as I said it has appeared more than once on this channel at this point. Next is Cupid which is to take a shot I see what they did there, um, at reading a new author. And so the book that I have chosen for this one and the author I've chosen is Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. Again, another book that has shown up on this channel so many times this year. I really feel like this could be like a potential favorite for me. It seems like it's going to be character driven. I don't mind stream of consciousness. I'm one of those few people that doesn't love it, doesn't hate it, kind of if it works it works, if it doesn't work it doesn't work, um, but I feel like this could be, as I said, a favorite of mine and I honestly don't know how I've gotten to nearly 32 years on this planet without having read anything by Virginia Woolf. As an English major on top of all of that too, like I don't know how that's possible. But yes, I do want to finally, finally, finally read this one. It's also fairly short, which is a good thing because quite a few of the books on this list are bricks. They are not small. So I do need to sprinkle in a few shorter reads that I can get to. And also this is one that I may use for the Christmas Carol bonus. Is that what it's called? It's the one that's to listen to it as an audiobook. If I do listen to it as an audiobook though I'm probably going to read it along as well. So I haven't decided yet. I still have a little time but that's a possibility for this one. Next we have Donner which is to read a book with green or red as the primary color on the cover. No one could have told me that this would be the most difficult prompt to find a book for. For whatever reason, I did not have that many unread books or books that I was particularly drawn to at this moment that were primarily red or green. I had a lot of books with red like spines, but then the actual cover was not red at all. So this ended up being quite a problem, especially because I couldn't count Catherine twice. If I could have done that, problem solved. But the book that I ended up picking for this was The Painted Girls by Kathy Marie Buchanan. It's about two sisters in the 19th century in Paris. I believe that their father dies and so both of them end up needing to find work in order to survive. One of them goes to the Paris Opera to be trained as a ballerina and becomes like one of Degas models for his famous paintings. The other sister has issues brought on by a romantic relationship. So I'm very curious about this one. Um, I do love sibling relationships in books. I find them really interesting. They can be really heartwarming or they can be really really tumultuous and you never really know what you're gonna get. In some cases both happen in a book, but I have owned it for some time and haven't gotten to it so that's why it's here. Um, but yeah, as you can see it does have red on the cover. I don't know if it's the primary color but it, I think it's, I think it works. I think it works. Then for Blitzen. Now this was a fun one. 
Blitzen was basically to select a book at random, so you had to have at least three and then figure out some randomization thing. And so what I ended up doing was posting a poll on my YouTube channel, and I put three titles there, and the winner of that was Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier with 67% of the results. Um, the other books were The Lost Queen by Signa Pike and what was that book? The Exhibition of Persephone Q by Jesse Jezowiska Stevens, which I'm looking behind me because it is in fact behind me. And this was the book that ended up winning. I wanted to get to this in October, didn't get to it because I didn't actually get to a ton of books in October, but I did want to read this by the end of the year. I love Daphne du Maurier, I've read two of her other books so far, um, and really wanted to get to this because a rule that I have is generally I reserve the right to call an author a favorite author until I've read three of their works and enjoyed them. like. And fangirled about them. So this would be the third book for Daphne du Maurier that I am reading and I believe it's once again set in, Col in Cornwall and it's kind of gothic, kind of suspenseful, there's a lot of dark and sinister elements from what I remember from having watched like an adaptation of it ages ago. So I'm looking forward to it but it's definitely not the most like cheery Christmassy type book out there. However, I am very much looking forward to it and it's again not a particularly long book which I did definitely need for this TBR. So that is what ended up being chosen and I'm not mad about it. Like not mad about it at all. So we'll see how I get on with this one. This is the other one that depending on how the reading month goes I could potentially use as the audiobook but we'll see. Again, if I do that I'd probably read along in the physical copy as well. And lastly we have Rudolph, which is to read a standalone and I chose The Last Station by Jay Perini. I want to read this book before the end of the year. <laughs> I have been talking about it constantly. I I am obsessed with Leo Tolstoy and this is a novel about the final year of his life. I am obsessed with the movie adaptation of this book which I might end up watching for like the millionth time again this evening, um, but I really really just want to get to this. I've had my eye on it, it's appeared countless times on this channel, I'm sure my regular subscribers are sick and tired of hearing about this book to be quite honest, but I do finally want to get to it so I figured why not add it as the standalone. So yes, it, it couldn't be a more Britney pick of a book. Let, let's be real. It's Russia, Sofia Tolstoy, Leo Tolstoy, historical fiction, potentially a tearjerker, all the things, all the things scream Britney. So there you go. So those, <laughs> them be the books that I'm trying to get to in December. As I mentioned, they're not particularly like festive Christmassy or holiday-y books, but that isn't, that isn't my brand. I do love my drama and my tearjerkers and my tragedies and that sort of thing. So at least the reason I'm reading them is festive with the Reindeer Games readathon. Um, but yes, that that's it. There are a lot of books here, a lot of big books. It is very ambitious, I know that, but the good thing is is that my company is actually closed for the week between Christmas and New Year's every year, so I'm very much looking forward to a week of reading, sleeping, and watching a ton of movies and like Netflix TV shows. So hopefully I can manage to get through some of them. I am also kind of sort of contemplating doing a 24-hour reading vlog during that week, 
So my hope is that if I do do that, I can make a serious dent in one or two of these books. But yeah, those are my picks for December and I am very, very excited about them. Let's see how many of them I can read before the end of the year. But if you are participating in the Reindeer Games Readathon, let me know in the comment section. Let me know what books you're most excited to read in December, what your holiday plans are, all that fun stuff. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe because it does help my little channel grow. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.